in a day of divisiveness, of, oh. of separation, of uh, us versus them, today we're going to talk about e pluribus unum, right. the, the idea of, um, and, and the, the issues that we're having right now with uh, all this division that we're living with in, in our society right now. That's right. We're all, we're all thinking about it because we hear about politics in Washington and the divisiveness and the lack of agreement and the animosity. I've often thought about how do we approach this topic and then we discovered this article right. written by a psychiatrist right. in San Francisco called We Are One and it begins with the, uh, with the discussion of the phrase on our national seal which is e pluribus unum, which means from many, one. Okay? Right. And um, it's really, an, a, a, I think he did a very good job. It's a very thoughtful mm -hmm. um, glance, right. glimpse into this, um, this ideal, what, what was once an ideal of from many, one. Right. Okay. Yeah. It, it was, we're going to, we're going to touch on it a little bit today and actually right. we're going to end the week. Uh, this week yeah. uh, with a very similar discussion uh, as we kind of get into uh, some of the and we're still working on uh, how we're going to present this but right. uh, because it's it, it is something that is so important that we really need to uh, feel we need to address and then that is the um, the controversial relationship between <laughs> Nike and, and Colin Kaepernick right. uh, so we're gonna kind of talk about that because well, it's it's very it's, it's related to the same issue of of us versus them, of the idea that, um, you know, on this side you have um, uh, Democrats, on this side you have Republicans, on this side you have... Liberals, um, conservatives. Liberals and conservatives. Um, Progressives and something it, else. It just, and he, he mentions all these dichotomies uh, that we have, you know, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter versus the police. And, right. you know, and, and it's this... Um, uh, again, us versus them mentality mm -hmm. right. is is so um, it, it, is a, it's a it can be a virus if right. we're not careful. That's um, right, and so. I think he's suggesting that it is. He doesn't come right out and say that, right. but um, he's sort of suggesting that it is right. uh, doing damage right. to the country. Um, there are really four main points that we want to make here. One is uh, in, in this podcast. One is the whole concept of e pluribus right. unum, and I think we really have lost. Mm -hmm. that ideal. Right. I mean, certainly in the past 20 years, right. um, we have lost that as we have become uh, more divisive. Right. I remember when um, years ago when um, moral issues, morality was first injected into politics. Right. And once you start talking about sexual orientation, gender, gender orientation, um, gay marriage, um, um, Who's who's Christian and who's not Christian? Right. Once you begin to introduce those, those are very personal issues, right. but they engender um, a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. um, we can we can disagree about the economy without disliking each other. Right. You don't disagree about gender orientation without risking disliking right. each other. Right. And so so it engendered a passion in politics mm -hmm. that hadn't been there before. Right. But those are just the beginning of our divisions. Right. You know, they, certainly they. Um, um, black-white division existed long before 20 mm -hmm. years ago, you know. So, um, but, but he talks about this concept, this ideal of, of um, us being together as a nation. And I think that in World War II, we forgot our uh, differences mm -hmm. because we had a common enemy. Right. And we're, later in the podcast, we're going to talk about common enemies because right. you need a common enemy if you're going to be a well, tribe, and that, you that, need a common enemy. Right, that happened after 9-11, right? We, we had, it did. This, oh, we had this significant, um, you know, unifying uh, mission. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and it, was, it was good in that sense that it, right. we all came together. It brought us together. But, um, you know, as, as you said, over the past 20 years or so, uh, and maybe even longer, mm -hmm. we've, we've had this, this push to to separate and to you know create these divisions and these tribes you know he right. you know we think about um, you know tribalism and uh, and the use of identity politics and you know mm -hmm. I know these are some of the other points that we're going right. to be making in this podcast but uh, all of these concepts have been not just not just perpetuated mm -hmm. but have 
<laughs> been put on steroids and they're exactly. like even stronger and even right. more significant and, and right. profound than than they should be. Right. Certainly. Yeah, because what e pluribus unum should be is a uh, is a call to patriotism to right. you know you you come from no matter where you come from. Mm -hmm. Italy, Germany, mm -hmm. England, mm -hmm. Africa, Asia, it doesn't matter where you come from. When you come here, we have what's we call it a melting pot. When you come here, you become American. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you you in a sense change your identity, mm -hmm. and it makes you more patriotic. Now you're a member, you're a citizen of this country. Right. Okay, instead, we have instead of bringing us together, we have split into factions, mm -hmm. and now we see the feminism versus patriarchy, mm -hmm. um, black versus white. Black Lives Matter versus police brutality. Now we have Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter. Right. You know? And um, there are all these movements um, uh, that, that pit one group um, against another. We have Midwesterners versus the coastal elites. Right, yeah, you know, that was you, another one he mentioned. You yeah. hear all those things. Um, white supremacists versus immigration. You know, mm -hmm. So we have all mm -hmm. these divisions now splitting us apart rather than bringing us together. Right. And he attributes this to, I, he, he said it may have begun with identity politics. Yeah. I don't have a clear understanding of identity politics. No? I don't. I, I mean, I hear the term, yeah. I kind of understand what it means. Yeah. He talks about the term originating back in the late 70s, 70s yeah. uh, 77. Um, and it had some in, some other intended use at that mm -hmm. time, but I don't. I, I think I understand what identity politics is, but I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, and the only the, the way that I understand it is that it has to do with, um, you know, sort of using um, specific uh, demographics or characteristics right. as a uh, as a political political um, platform or or stage. Um, but but yeah, it's he sort every of, word that I read. It's a little. It seems to be a defined different. a little bit different. Right. He mentions a, a Native American movement that, right. that brought, and and I remember uh, bury my heart at wounded knee and some other mm -hmm. Native American movements in the seventies, mm -hmm. and that um, Native Americans whose culture had been uh, destroyed uh, by um, by our movement uh, westward uh, manifest destiny. Um, he talks about, I, I think he, he's suggesting that Native Americans began to identify themselves right. as a group, that mm -hmm. we are a culture, mm -hmm. we are a people. Um, and they used it as a, as a way of saying, hey, we're part of all this too, you right. know, even though we, but we should be part of this. And it was as though identity politics was a way of, um, of bringing people together. Right. It has changed over time to separate people. Right. You know, I, I identify as right. uh, Republican or conservative. And I hate the labels conservative and liberal because I don't know what I am. I'm, I'm not sure w what, which one of those I fit into. Right. The people, politicians and news people t want me, seem to want me to identify with one or the other and I'm not sure which one I fit in. Right. You know, some friends call me liberal and some call me conservative. I, I don't know what I am. I don't know how you, I don't know what the identity is there. Right. And before you think that this is a political podcast. No. No. Mm -hmm. what, what this is, is, you know, the, the importance of being more, of e pluribus unum, of, of the unifying nature of what we once had here right. in, in this country, it is the strength that comes from working together. Mm -hmm. You know, when... One of the big concerns that I have, for example, is as we perpetuate tribalism and d divisions and divisiveness and, you know, again, us versus them, it, it fosters a tremendous amount of anxiety and mm -hmm. stress, stress and pressure um, in, in everybody because you, um, you know, I, I have people that I talk to, um, patients who have difficulty going into some stores. Mm -hmm. Because they know that those stores are Trump supporters and they're not a Trump supporter So they're very anxious about going in there because they don't know what they're going to hear or what's mm -hmm. going to be said or what's going to be and it's uh, You know that those kinds of divisions are so They're so again. It's, it's like a virus and it, and it really limits and, and, and impairs our ability to function 
Right. Um, and, and that's why it's important from a psychological perspective, right. uh, the, some of these identity politics and... and yeah. These divisions create stress. They, yeah. they create anxiety. They mm -hmm. create stress. Um, the people who, I mean, we all feel it, mm -hmm. but, but the people who are being um, marginalized, who are being pushed away, um, who, are the, who are the victims right. of um, these the identity politics, uh, certainly could create depression right. and other things in them, mm -hmm. certainly a state of unease. Right. Um, and so, no, we're, we're talking about the psychological implications, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the political implications right. of this. Um, because to, to have identity politics, it sort of credentials me. He uses the term credential. It credentials me. You know, I'm, I'm um, right. a conservative. Okay? Yeah. But it, at the same time, it has to, um, it has to be critical of the others. Right. Okay. The, the, in other words, I identify myself as this. Therefore, you have to be. It's like watching a college football game. Well, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Florida State fan or a Gator fan or this fan. So I have to hate the other team. When when I think about that, I think wait, these are all young men. Right. All they're all Americans. Right. I mean, we're all in the same country. Right. And yet we hate each other because right. of the athletic teams we play on. You know. Right. And and that's what we're creating. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's wonderful to root for your team, but. Um, but but the other side of that is you have to be prejudicial right. to others. Well, and I, I like what you said earlier that at, at what this does is it um, is it creates the the at least illusion that if I'm if I'm this, mm -hmm. I'm not that, and, and by implication, that from my perspective is bad. Right. Because yeah. I don't want to be that. That's right. And, and, and so it closes us off to communication. It closes us off to, to listening and, mm -hmm. and talking and you know, finding solutions to problems because right. we're going to automatically um, perceive anything that comes from that side or that camp or that tribe right. as negative, as bad, as, bad. Um, mm -hmm. as against my best interest. Right. And when we, when we come from that perspective, we, we immediately become defensive and, right. and we put up those walls that keep everybody else out. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it really takes away our opportunity to, to work together and right. find, find common solutions to problems. That's right, because... I mean, in, imagine a marriage working that way. Right. Where the husband's <laughs> like, no, I'm on the man's side. I'm on the man's you know, side. <laughs> the wife is, no, I'm on the woman's side and we're not right. going to, you know, anything right. that comes from that side is bad. It's, Right. right. That, that marriage would never work. That and marriages that do that don't work. Right. Right. If you if you worked in those kind of tribes, you know, mm -hmm. here's the man tribe, so all the male children right. have to be over here. Here's the female tribe, so mm -hmm. all the women children have. To, right. You know, we wouldn't think of doing that. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so, this is what we call tribalism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Instead of bringing people together for the benefit of everybody, and I think that's been lost here in the last generation or so, is that that our country should should be structured, should work so that it works for everybody. Right. You know, um, somebody said years ago, well, and, and I think, I don't know whether it was back in the 60s or 70s, somebody said, well, no, once I'll run against my opponents, but if elected, I'm the president of the entire country. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not just the president of the people who voted for me. Right. I'm the president of the entire country. Right. And we're losing that ideal because of tribalism. Because right. I'm in this tribe. Mm -hmm. So I can only be loyal to them. Right. Okay. And so you create tribalism and with tribalism you create animosity. Right. Okay. And that's the danger is yeah. that it's psychologically uh, toxic right. for everybody right. because you now have victors and the vanquished right. and, and that's what we're creating with tribalism. Right. Okay. Um, go ahead. No, I, I agree. And, and, it, and then, you know, as we do that, we push and push the others others away, and then there's always going to be a backlash. There's That's going right. to be a reaction, right. and, and and those reactions tend are going to continue to be, or it's going to be at risk for continuing to be more and more extreme. That's right. That, that's because exactly. it's the more that you push somebody, you know, think about a rubber band. The more that you stretch the rubber band, right. the harder it's going to snap back, and so that backlash is going to be more and more um, serious. Right. In the fifties and sixties. Um, the, the enemy was the communists, you right. know, and we, we um, 
fought the Russians in the Olympics and mm -hmm. we had you know right. other contest everything was a contest okay, mm -hmm. between Russia and or right. the Soviet Union and um, and the United States and it, but it was an external today they're internal enemies mm -hmm. today we're fighting against each other right okay we, we used to direct all that at other we fought the Germans or we fought the Japanese or we fought the Nazis or we fought the communists now we're fighting each other right you know, that same energy mm -hmm. that comes from tribalism we're using against mm -hmm. each other and that's the damaging part of this right. is, is that we're turning it on each other right and as soon as, so when the tribe was the United States right. like during World War II, it brought everybody together. Right. Now we're splitting into factions. So identity politics mm -hmm. now has become tribalism right. and we're battling with each other, right. you know, which is a, a, a dangerous, I think, uh, direction for us to go in. Absolutely. Certainly it is psychologically. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Uh, because again, we, we, we fall into this situation where, um, you know, we see everyone else as different. If they mm -hmm. don't think the same way that we do, they are different. And if they're different, they're wrong. And mm -hmm. if they're wrong, they don't have my best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have my best interest in mind, they are out to hurt me. Right. And it's right. A, a very, a very linear path from right. you know disagreement to mm -hmm. um, you know the perception that you are out to get me. Right. And you, you talk about the backlash, mm -hmm. you know, which is the dangerous part of right. this because the two opposing forces here are universalism, mm -hmm. that is we're all in this together, mm -hmm. versus tribalism. Right. Okay. And so while there's this movement toward universalism, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're trying to make the country work for everybody, there's always this tendency to go back to your tribe, mm -hmm. you know, identity politics. Right. You know, I, I can't go there. I'm a conservative, so I can't ever support liberals, or right. however that works. Um, and so, if I'm, a, if well, enough examples, but there's always this tension between universalism and tribalism, mm -hmm. and you get the backlash because every once in a while, tribalism comes back. Right. Okay, and it's and it's because of that. I think you call it a linear mm -hmm. sort of movement. Um, you have these extreme positions, mm -hmm. and they're based on fear. Right. You know, I, there's this siege mentality that mm -hmm. somebody's out to get me, right. and you can feel it in in our country today mm -hmm. that people who have these very very strong opinions, um, who become very defensive, it's as though they're under siege from somewhere. Right. They've been they've been led. They've been made to believe that somehow they're in danger as a, right. as a group. Well, first of all, the groups are arbitrary. Right. And that's the last point that he makes in the article, which um, I'm thankful that he does. The, the, the tribes are arbitrary. Right. You know, um, and he mentions, <laughs> I think it's safe to say this, he mentions Ben Carson and Clarence Thomas. Mm -hmm. They're both black men, mm -hmm. okay? That puts them in one tribe. Mm -hmm. But they are also part of a uh, conservative political movement, which puts them in another tribe. Right. Okay, so tribes shift yeah. and right. they're arbitrary. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what he says in the end is, we all, we can only speak for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 identifying too much with a group creates these sort of problems right. because th your tribe is going to shift from moment mm -hmm. to moment. You know, I have I have cousin. I think we talked about liberal and conservative, and many people will say, "Well, I'm, I'm liberal, um, in my moral values. My social values are liberal, but my economic values are conservative." So mm -hmm. where do you fit? You right. know, they're, they're, this whole business about identity politics and tribes um, is creating a tension that we really don't need. That's right. probably bad for all of us. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it's. I, I like again that that is so artificial because yeah. you're going to jump from one tribe to another tribe, um, and you, you know one day you're going to wear one hat and another day you're going to wear a different hat. Right. Um, but the, but the other thing is that when we when we when we get into these tribes, what we're doing is um, we're looking for an identity. We're looking for right. uh, a group for us to fit into. And we, it, it, that is a bio, I don't know, what's it? Evolutionary. Uh, it's a, it's a evolutionary right. need mm -hmm. for us to fit in with a group for us, because that's how we feel secure. That's how we right. ensure survival mm -hmm. for our species. The, the, the 
problem, of course, is that it's so artificial today. Now it's artificial. You know, it, it, it's not yeah. like it was when we were, you know, hunter gatherers, where we yeah. needed a tribe to stay together because there were, <laughs> if you, know, you if you wild drift, animals <laughs> or needed food. If you imagine um, our country, what is now the United States, five hundred years ago, mm -hmm. six hundred years ago, where you had Native American tribes. Right. If you drifted into somebody else's tribe, you might be dinner. Right. You know, you, you, you might be killed. Right. Okay. And so tribalism at that time did serve a, an adaptive and protective Survival. purpose. You mm -hmm. know, we'll, we'll take care of our own, right. but, but we're not going to take care of you. And they right. would fight over land or, or um, animals on the land. Or, right. And, and the fighting of the land wasn't because of the land per se. It was because of the resources the on food, the land. The food right. that was there. Okay. They were fighting over limited resources. Yeah. Okay. So we, we understand that. But today, these are arbitrary. Uh -huh. These are arbitrary divisions. There's no, there's no. It's not life and death mm -hmm. for the things that we're discussing right. today. Their yeah. their opinions and they're arbitrary and they're social constructs. And time maybe to think about breaking down some of these yeah. barriers. And it would be better for everybody if we move from tribalism to universalism. Yeah. And better for everybody emotionally and psychologically. I agree. So. Mm -hmm. All right. But again, we're going to get into this a little bit more detail on Saturday's podcast when we talk right. about um, Colin Kaepernick and some of those. But again, things. emphasize, this is not a political discussion. Right. Right. Um, thank you. Yeah. These are yeah. The, the psychological implications. Some of the decisions being made are political. Right. Uh, we're in a campaign season, so we're going to see a great deal of this right now. Right. But we're, we're trying to discuss this from a psychological standpoint right. because anything we can do to reduce or eliminate stress and anger and animosity mm -hmm. and divisions is good for everybody. Absolutely. Okay. So. All right. That's it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Mm -hmm.